Hi folks, Michael Collins here. It's Thursday, September 8th, 2011, and we're doing another test of foods made in Japan and uh, sell, sold here in the United States, specifically in Southern California. We have a, a vegetable juice drink that we have tested through a bag, through the container, and we've had heightened spot reading indications of increased radiation going up to about 58 uh, counts per minute. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to pour some of this drink that's been shooken up. We're going to pour it into our little testing glass to the left and also into the filter to the right so we can filter the entire amount and uh, we'll run a 10 minute reading on the left while we're filtering on the right and then we'll run a 10 minute reading on the filtered residue or, or particulates that are left over after we drain out the water which serves to hamper radiation readings so here is our juice and we're going to get our 10 minute averaging on right now. 100% calibrated 10 minute time and now we are going to go right on top of it. Same time, we're going to pour this juice through this filter. pretty easy. Obviously pouring pretty easy. Straining slower. We've got the time to do it. We have a very small amount of juice on the left does not seem to be tripping or I uh, the uh, inspector nuclear radiation monitor that much but then again I made bad calls before on trying to eyeball this in terms of trying to figure out what the total count will be last background we took here in radiation station with this instrument was 38.0 counts per minute It's actually taking longer to um, filter than I thought, but no matter, we're still going to have our 10 minute count, and when this is fully filtered, take account of it. Now, I know some people have written us and said, hey, that beer that tested high in radioactivity, apparently, tell us the name brand of it, or right now while you're watching this might ask, well, why am I covering up the bottle from which this vegetable juice came? Well, I think some of the reasons are fairly obvious. However, there's a couple of other reasons, and they're more scientific, which is this. Radiation Station and Bioreporter.com are privately funded and funded by you. And um, so as such, we cannot do comprehensive uh, tests of every store 
uh, in Southern California that se sells this product. There are 43 Japanese stores identified as such in the Japanese telephone directory uh, for 2011. There's about 885 Japanese restaurants through Southern California. We can't test all of them. We don't have a laboratory to tell you if we have an overage, just what's in that overage. I mean, what the radionuclide is. Now, we can do tests to determine, do we have any beta in here? Do we have any alpha in here? And uh, we absolutely uh, uh, can do that. We can give you an indication of whether the medium that we're testing ionizes more radiation, gives off more radiation than the background it's in. But because of our limitations, because we can't do what the, say, government could do and is not doing at all, as far as we know, uh, we can give you uh, these indications, but because we can't test everywhere, it's just not fair to the, uh, to the stuff that we test that appears uh, elevated in radiation to us. It's, uh, it's just actually scientifically not uh, as good a process as possible to take single samples and say, hey, there's uh, radiation in this particular vegetable drink. Don't buy it anywhere. Uh, we don't know if there is heightened radiation in this vegetable matter even here right now, but everywhere in Southern California and across the United States. Because we can't assure you of that, we don't want to test something and have everybody look at it and go, I'm not buying that anywhere. Because we haven't proved that it's hot everywhere. However, what we are showing is that food and drink products from Japan are coming into the American consumer product stream with heightened radiation as far as we can tell as compared to background. And this means that either this material has not been inspected adequately, which is my guess, and guess it is, because the governments of Japan and the United States make uh, a lot of grand uh, uh, statements about how they're going to check everything, and I don't believe that they are. It's not evidenced by what we're seeing here, nor is it evidenced by the fact that in the last month or so, uh, month and change, the Obama administration has quietly shelved our mega Geiger counters that we've been using in our ports that you run containers through and you're supposed to be able to detect all the way into the containers with these these big Geiger counters that they don't work. Anybody who knows about alpha and beta radiation will know that to detect it you got to get on top of it. With alpha radiation by far the most dangerous radiation it could be stopped by your skin and piece of paper so if it's existing in a box of something, food product, drinking product, from Japan that's been contaminated, these mega Geiger counters wouldn't have picked it up anyway. So several hundred million dollars later, they come to this conclusion. And they say that what we're going to do is we're going to give our customs guys, our guys inspecting the food, and the, and the drink from overseas, not just Japan, we're going to give them handheld detectors. Now, if you've ever seen photos of some of the bigger ports in America, in uh, the East Coast, around New York, Newark, Port of Long Beach, Port of Los Angeles, I believe Seattle, you'll see that they are, are just, uh, they're just too big to send out fellas uh, and gals with uh, handheld detectors. It's just not going to work. 
Now you can see here that I'm getting a lot of this stuff from, uh, there's a lot of particulate matter in this vegetable juice. So we don't show uh, our labels. Um, however, we are telling you this is uh, from Japan. And the advice about this food is the same advice we give about any food post 311, which is this. If you don't know what you're putting in your mouth, and know, have a good probability of knowing what the radioactive content is of it, well, you might want to reconsider putting it in your mouth, feeding it to your children. Now, of course, we're taking items here from Japan that we would like to see um, come in low, radiation-wise, but, um, you know, the radionuclides will fall where they may. Looks like it's going to take quite a while to strain this this uh, bottle of uh, vegetable matter, but we will strain it nevertheless. And we're getting some unstrained results right now on the left, with the inspector just detecting over what is not very much of this juice. certainly is a pretty color. That's from the carrots in it. When I'm done pouring, I'll tell you a little bit about what's, what's in this juice. Now that indicates the end of the 10 minute period of testing. You can still hear the detector picking up ionized radiation either from background or from uh, this particular juice. So what we're going to do now is quickly take a ballpark guess. It's not a guess actually at all. Our previous uh, average was uh, 38.0. We have I'm writing this down and doing the calculations for you. Remember the margin of error for the inspector, inspector is 15%. So 15% uh, of 442 is 0.5. or 44.2 counts per minute, which is our average, is 6.63. And minus that, and it comes down to Hold on. Well, I'm going to give you the overage first because we know that the background is 38.0. So we have that minus this. So we have Bear with me. We have 16.3% increased radiation over background for that small amount of juice on the left. Like I said, the margin of error for this machine is 15%. doing some more math.
So the margin of error brings us down to right around where the background is, 37 point six or it could be higher than that but what we do have is a sixteen point three percent uh, increase in radiation due uh, coming from that uh, small amount of juice on the left when the juice is finally strained we will um, then take that those filters there that are doing the straining and attempt to uh, measure what's in the actual pulp